Today we are going to try something that I call a negative edit. And what that means is we started with our original picture that looked like this. This is just the bag lining the trash can out in the quad. For an image like this, I went with black and white. I did a little bit of a color grading overlay. And then we're going to flip the tones using the tone curve and also lay it, layer it on top of itself inside of Photoshop. We're going to go to Photoshop for the first time, layer it, and also do some blending layers. It's pretty easy stuff. It's just got some new moves. So let's start here on the original. Um, for this project, you guys can do black and white or color, but I think this looks better in black and white, so I'm going to go that way on this image. Uh, our number one move is always going to be cropping. Uh, this corner down here is bugging me a little bit because it's real bright, so I'm going to keep it at 5x7. I don't want to do a square. And just pull this corner up a little bit. And what I'm actually doing with my cropping is I'm watching all corners to see lines coming out of the corners because I think that's good composition. Did that. All right, let's go up and look at profiles. I'm looking for one that enhances the shininess but isn't too, too bright. I like this one, number six. Slide it around a little bit. There we go. Got a little more detail right there. Okay, closing it. Now, this corner, lower left corner, is way too bright, but we know how to mask. So I'm going to use the brush and just paint over that corner. Turn off my overlay. Bring the exposure down a little bit. And the highlights and the whites. Okay, that looks good. So now we're done with our mask. Um, I don't like these dust spots or this uh, kind of string shape. So I'm going to go to the Band-Aid tool. And I'm going to start with the eraser version of the Band-Aid. And my um, brush is already of real good size, but if yours is too big, too small, you can just slide it back and forth here. And you want it to be you know, fairly small, so it's just hitting that dot. Now, this kid right here, that has some details in the background that I have to be careful with. So I'm going to use the eraser on the edges where the background doesn't have detail. And then I'm going to go to the Band-Aid for the middle part. And what it will do is it will find similar texture and fill it in. And if I don't like what it found before it was using something more like this, right about there, then I could fill in. So at least I have more of a line that's believable. And now I'm done with erasing. Okay, so let's play with the contrast on this kid. I don't want things to be too shiny. Uh, I'm going to take the highlights down so they get a little darker. Clarity is a great tool for this particular one. Texture, good. Dehaze is too much, so I'm just going to do a little dehaze. Here's our new move. Go down to the tone curve. This is a line graph that basically is showing you the dark values, the medium gray values, and the light values. And this is how the computer is reading them, is on this line. If we pull the bright values all the way down and push the black values all the way up, but I don't want to curve it, I just want to push it so it's like I've reversed the curve. Come on. Sometimes it's hard to grab that little point. You get what I call a negative edit. There we go. So now everything's the opposite. Now you saw just a second ago that I can tweak this line and play with how dark or how bright darks get, lights get. So I don't want things to get too like murky gray. I kind of like that this plastic looks like um, those silver mylar birthday balloons. So there we go. 
Okay, so now everything's reversed and I can really see these lines pretty nicely. I'm going to skip the black and white panel because the way I've done the edits, you're not going to see very much edit. Maybe the blues will help in the, the bag there, but not too much else is happening. All right, so now let's go to color grading. And color grading, there's three different ways you can look at this tool. You can look at the three balls of color at the same time, uh, or you can do one color, which will give you what they call a global change. It means it's going over everything. So it makes the whole picture, you know, a blue and white picture or a red and white picture or whatever, right? Or you can do it color by color. So right now we can just add in this orangey red color to the highlights. You can make it be whatever you feel like it. Okay. So whatever color makes you happy. Then you can go to your midtones. So your medium grays. What color will they be? And then the last one would be your shadows. So I'm leaning towards kind of a purpley blue on everything. And you can adjust this slider for how bright the color is. You adjust the slider for how much it blends. And then you adjust this slider for how much the colors balance and blend with each other. If you want at the end, sometimes at the end after I've done color by color, I like to go back to the three Let's see if there's something I want to change a little bit and then I can play with the balance and the blending. The more you go to the outer circle, the more outer edge of the circle, the more vibrant it becomes. The more you stay in the middle, the more subtle the color becomes. Now I'm darkening the color. There, I'm kind of liking that. Get some green in there. Okay, so there's that kid. All right, so now what I'm going to do, and this is the new thing for us, is we're going to play with this in Photoshop. And inside of Photoshop, we're going to overlap this with the original black and white and then play with how those two blend together. So I'm going to go back in my history and go down to before I did any curves, all right? So the last move I made before curves was dehaze, and it looked like that. And I'm gonna go Command Apostrophe, so I have that. And now I'm gonna go back to this guy. I'm going to go all the way back up to this new kind of Technicolor version. I'm going to hold down the Command key and click on the copy. So you can see at the bottom here, both pictures have a light gray outline. That's really important. Photo, edit in, and go to the very, very bottom where it says Open as Layers in Photoshop. and Photoshop will open the two pictures. Now, we are used to a history panel over here. Photoshop has a layer panel on the right side. If I click the eyeballs, it takes my picture on and off. If I want, I can switch the order just by clicking and dragging. However I want to do it, okay? The only tool we're going to use today is right here where it says normal and where it says opacity. Um, so we'll try it. I actually want to put my new, my negative color version on top. All right, so I'm going to go to normal and you'll see there's this long list and each one of these is a blending mode. So what it does is it changes how the two photos see each other. And as you start scrolling, like boom, darken, it takes the dark values and enhances them. Multiply does it even more. So your first 
deal is to scroll through and see which of these you like the best. And it's purely your opinion. Some of these have virtually no effect and some of them have massive effects. So after you pick what you like, I kind of liked what was happening here, like with Darken. Now the next thing I'm going to do is opacity and slide it around and see if I like it. When I take my opacity down, it's making the top layer more see-through and kind of disappearing. When I take my opacity all the way to 100%, you can barely see the layer underneath it. So this is just adjusting how much. Multiply. I also liked some of these guys down here. It was one, some of these light, these ones with vivid light. Like, I really like those colors. And I'm just sliding it around until I like it. And I'm done. And that's it. So now, how do you save this? What do you do with it? You are going to, today, send it back to Lightroom by going like this. Up here at the top you go File and I'm ready to close. And I want to save it. And it'll save it temporarily in Photoshop. It's not going to stay there forever. Um, I'll teach you in the future how to deal with that, but here it is in Lightroom. So now I have three versions of this. My original, my negative edit, and my blended one. And that's it. Good job, you guys.